dude, I remember like there was it, for a while I was like, at least Jews aren't joining in with this, like, but what was me stuff? And for a while we really weren't, you know, because uh, we always had kind of the Trump card in terms of like h- historically, you know, sure. Uh, or maybe you guys don't get taught that in school. In actual, <laughs> but like um, it was just like whatever, some European stuff. But like um, uh, uh, live from the Willie Nelson and Friends Museum Showcase in Nashville, Tennessee, it's music is funny. Musicians talking to comedians about music and comedy with your hosts, Raylan Nelson and Jonathan Bright. Hey everybody, I'm Raylan Nelson. And I'm Jonathan Bright from the Raylan Nelson Band. Welcome back to Music is Funny. Hey, we're playing May 13th and 14th in Woodstock, Georgia, May 28th in Memphis, Tennessee. Also May 22nd in Pascagoula, Mississippi. I'm going to do a solo show there and June 25th in Louisville, Kentucky, June 26th in South Pittsburgh, Tennessee, July 23rd in Panama City Beach, and July 24th in Santa Rosa. There you Beach. go. Come see us if you're around. Anyway, this week we got another great longtime comedian. Um, not only is he a hilarious stand-up, he's got a great podcast called Skeptic Tank. Yeah, we're big fans of that. He's done a TV show on Comedy Central. He's yeah. A world traveler. Yeah, he's the uh, music festival shaman. Yeah, and the king of canceled. Yeah, and we did have a few Zoom issues to begin with, but uh, if it kind of freezes up, it gets better along the way. If it freezes up, just pretend like you're on mushrooms. Yeah, that's what we do. Also, uh, he owns this song. Without further ado, uh, Ari Shafir. This song is owned by Ari Shafir. Can you hear us? Yeah, uh, hang on a second. I got to uh, feed in this thing. Okay. Hi. How's that? Oh, there you go. Ari! What's up, guys? Hey, man. How are you? Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. My name is Ray Lynn, and this is JB. And we're your hey, biggest... JB. Hey, man. How you doing? We're your biggest fans. And... We should talk about how this kind of all came about. Yeah. Uh, we We clearly listen to a lot of podcasts and shit. We're driving around touring and shit, so... Well, I had heard a couple of years ago, he was like, let's listen to Ari. Let's listen to Ari. And I searched you on YouTube and saw that you did yoga. And I was like, okay, I, let's listen to Ari. So we got into listening to your podcast while we were on the road. But I had heard Pepper's yeah. uh, theme song that he did, which, uh, you know, was just him sitting there screaming and singing the Ari Shafir owns this song bit. So I told Ray Lynn while we were driving around, I was like, we should just cover that. It would be hilarious. It's a cover song. It's not even really a song. We'll send, I bet Ari will listen to it. And I thought, I was like, why? This is dumb. <laughs> it was pretty ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Was, I'm like, well, we're not doing anything. It's so a cover of a fake song. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the idea in itself is ridiculous. Ray Lynn thought I was nuts. Yeah, I thought it was, I was like, why? This is dumb. And he's like, I know, but it's completely ridiculous, but it's funny. I was like, okay, let's do it. Why not? And then we went on this spree of writing theme songs for people, but you're the only one who used the one. And we actually didn't even write that one. Yeah. We just covered it. And by we, she means she went on a spree of writing theme, theme songs for people. I'm like, we got shit to do. And she's like, oh, we'll, we'll do one for Nikki. We'll do one for Whitney. Like, They'll play it. Ari played it. No, but they didn't. They don't like it. Did but, they not use it? No. No, but I was thinking, Ari, uh, how do you feel about oh. me changing their names to just say Ari and because we have this site. Yeah. What, let me run this by you. I had this fast. idea last like night. badly dubbed over. Uh, that okay, let me hear. Yeah. But so uh, we were talking about, I was like, we should upload this song, the Ari song, just to have it on a presence on Spotify. Hilarious. And then we were like, well, but technically, oh, absolutely. Yeah. But we were like, but technically Ari, Ari owns, owns his song. song. So I was like, what if, <laughs> what if Ari, <laughs> started a band or a solo project and just kind of like the Ari Shafir band. You don't write anything. You don't record anything. You don't produce anything. You don't this is your it. first single and you'd be the only band that has no qu- or no. input in their output whatsoever. You don't have to do it. That would be interesting. Like gorillas aren't actual people in their band. They aren't. But I would take it one step further. You're saying. One step. I wouldn't have any association at all with my band. Just, just your name, and you don't even have to perform. You neither write nor perform nor produce your own music. That'd be great. I put on concerts and just not even come to the city. Just like green green screen myself (laughs) over like the St. Louis arches and just be like, I'm here or something. Yeah, maybe a hologram thing like they've been doing. Yeah, are they still doing that? How they finished a biggie? Yeah. That being said, you won't make any money off of Spotify. 
or Trust Apple us. or anything right. doing it. Yeah. But uh, you might make 30 cents in 10 years. So we really, since you own the song, we feel like it should go to you and we think you should, you should get this started. We can actually put it up and post. We could it. do that, or I could just sue your estate for uh, unusable, unused, like for back catalog pay. You know, <laughs> there you go. You end up owning half of Willie Nelson. Ari Shafir is serving you now, and then <laughs> 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 that's right. Half of his like, half of his like, un unheralded tequila land line. Turns out, I own um, half of crazy. Now. Oh, is that him behind? That's so. Thanks, Will, for coming down for this. Well, yeah. you know. He's Only for the big guys does he stop by. He's drinking tequila right now. We can't, you know, he doesn't like to chat when he's drinking tequila. So, yeah. Um, so what kind of actually music? did not think about this till right now, but I, I hooked up with a chick in Dallas once. And she goes, uh, you want to smoke out of uh, Willie Nelson gave me a vaporizer. You want to smoke out of it? And I was like, yeah, all right. And then, <laughs> and then we smoked out of Willie Nelson's vaporizer. I don't know. Really? Maybe you did. It's not a great story, but <laughs> that was the end of it. Yeah. Yeah. So what kind of music? We all smoked. Then? Her, me, and nope. her brother. And then her brother left, and I heard her go like. Oh, what was that? Oh, I think we're What's just. That? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I heard her brother go like, you can hook up with that guy? And she was like, yeah, I'm gonna. And I was like, oh, sweet. Because I was in the other room. Anyway, what kind of music do I like? <laughs> Is that what you asked? <laughs> like, when did you start? Were you early as a kid? Did you come up on it later? Casual, you know? Yeah, I was a, I was like top forty. I was fucking awful. It was like I would listen to Casey Kasem every every what, Sunday. Yeah, like start to finish. I just had no taste. It was whatever was given to me as taste, you know. So like some of it was cool back then, and some of it wasn't. It was like such a mixture between like The Cure and Banana Rama, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's like you couldn't really. It was just like whatever the the, the world decided was big, and then. <laughs> uh, and then probably when I was like 20, that's when I discovered like alt, an alt station. Right. Um, that's now defunct WHFS in, in Washington, DC. Um, they had WHF festival. It was great. But then they like introduced you to like smashing pumpkins and green day, early green day, well, mid early green day. And then it was like, Oh, what is all this? And then they got rid of all the, you know, the more like pop leaning stuff. Yeah, and you're, you're so truly, that was like my that was like my type of music. So it's just like white boy music, you yeah. know, whatever the, the the lineage of that is. Arcade Fire now, LCD sound system, shit like that. Yeah, well, when you're a kid, unless you got cool parents or a cool older brother or sister, you're you know you're subject to whatever you're exposed to. Like you said, Raylan's first record was what in sync. Yeah, I love to bring that. Is that weird? Well, yeah, we're older sister. Yeah, in sync. Uh, yeah, I was never that. My older sister had an information society. Um, album and I was like what the this is awesome just because she had it you know <laughs> right um in sync did you listen to that Raylan yeah that was the first CD I bought I was definitely a Justin Timberlake head that was me Damn. <laughs> well you had to pick one you had to pick 98 <laughs> degrees Backstreet Boys or in sync and I, I you know in sync sold me they seem the most real Ari yeah you if you know? pick 98 degrees you're a dork you're a loser and you have nothing you mean you hide that shit but in sync or not, or the Backstreet Boys, you can like okay, either of these you could like, whatever it was time and place. But if you pick the other one, you're you're screwed. Yeah, yeah. And New Kids on the Block were big when I was like four, you know. But I remember everyone talking about them. Yeah. And um, and now I just like One Direction and all that suit. I can't get into it, but I get it. I get it because I was there one time, you know. What's well, the same thing over and over? Yeah. Now you know it's just cheesy. You ever hear, you ever think about Backstreet Boys and then like, and go like whatever, like One Direction is that now, right? And then you go the other way and go like, and they're both awful. Now you can tell, but then you go like, oh, was the Jackson 5 also terrible? And they were just <laughs> yeah. predated me and I, did, I just didn't know. The Beach Boys? What about them? Or, well, at least Maybe the Beach Boys too. Are they a boy band? The Beatles? The Beatles? They're a boy band. I mean, they're the original boy band, right? Yeah. yeah. True. I guess technically they they weren't put together by yeah somebody. they were formed right but you got you, yeah. the Os we can't forget the Osmonds oh yeah uh huh yeah. my mom was really into Donny Osmond they just didn't have a tough manager who like you know <laughs> to beat them. stuff to them yeah. some Mormon father as opposed I bet to your mom like totally flipped the bean to her <laughs> <laughs> I bet she did yeah and uh, there was another You're guy. Mormon are you a Mormon I'm not Mormon no. yeah. 
When did you get into uh, yoga? Okay. Sorry, I don't know where that came from. When did you get into yoga? I'm not into it. <laughs> it's retarded. I'm not into what? it at all. I hate it. <laughs> I got yeah. into it because my idiot friends decided to have a yoga challenge in October to be sober and couple it with something. And then I was just doing it a bunch and I thought I, I hated it. And then me and Kreischer were like, we we're on the uh, Impractical Jokers cruise like right afterwards on November 1st. And we we're like, can we teach a yoga, a drunk yoga class? And so they let us and Kreischer did shots the whole time um on this cruise full of fucking you know <laughs> rednecks and shit and it was just like they all were like trying their best and there was actually one yoga instructor there and she was like now you guys have the you know them all um and so then i'm like i want to do that but oh it's so dumb it's great i would love to see drunk rednecks trying to do warrior three or warrior two that's crazy warrior three i don't know that one show me that one Oh, that's like standing stick where you just stand with your um, with your leg up in the back. You know, Warrior Three. Hold on. Oh yeah, I like that one. No, I like that one. I don't know all the names. Oh, you gotta go. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty good. We're still freezing a little bit going in and out here. Yeah, we're on a lag, but this is fun. It makes it. Yeah, me too. I don't know if it's, it's probably me. I think it's unstable. Fuck! I hate this shit. I hate this world. I thought I was came back to America. I'd be in good connection. And yeah. It's not. Do you guys have to edit all this? Does this happen a lot or never? Oh, we're not editing this. This is great. No, the only time it's fucked up is it was <laughs> on long periods of silence. <laughs> the only time it fucked up was our end. We forgot to push. Well, we, she forgot to press record and we were talking to Jim Florentine, but we did a whole <sighs> podcast, got done, and it didn't, nothing happened when we stopped. And we're like, uh, I don't think that one recorded. It didn't. Oh my God. Yeah. I've done that before so many times. User error. It sucks, dude. I've had those yogas where I like, I go to press stop on the, on the, on the, um, camera. And then you just hear me on like on the audio going, okay, stop camera. Fuck. No! Like, you're just not recording at all. You just don't know until you're done. And then you're like trying to figure out a fix and it just ain't going to happen. Yeah. No. You just have to kill yourself. Well, now, it's called for. <laughs> <laughs> now I just check every 20 seconds to make sure it says it's recording. You know, now that's what it was a great yeah. opportunity to give her shit for a while. too. I though. couldn't even email him and tell him <laughs> it happened. JB had to pretend to be me and email it. You just don't even email. You just like say like, hey, great episode. People really liked it. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. He probably never watched the one. He actually came back and did another one, but he probably never watched that one. Either. No, he didn't. But it was cool that he did it yeah. again. Yeah. So when did when yeah. did you. Uh, moving a little bit we talked about music a little bit but i'm always curious as how you started in comedy like were you a youngster that wanted to do it or was it something you came up on late because everybody that we've talked to has got a completely different way that they oh, kind really of, yeah almost. interesting yeah um my buddy always told me i should do it when i was like younger because i was like kind of class clownish a little bit but it, it was never i was just always like a back in my mind thing and i, I did it once in college just to try, like wear like a three piece suit. I didn't know any better at some open mic. And then, um, and then after college, I was like, I just sort of like, I took some screenwriting class. So I just told everybody I was going to move to LA to be a screenwriter, but then like also try to do stand up comedy. But I didn't want to tell anybody that because I'm like, I didn't take any classes in stand up. So I didn't think I like had the right to do it. You know, I was like, right. But then I figured out later, like, no one knows how to do it. Um, yeah, and then I just liked that hell of a lot more than writing, so I just like immediately stuck with it. So yeah, I was twenty five, right? After, yeah, right after college, maybe six months after, mm. drove out to California. So that first time, did like, you have? Did you like just sign up for an open mic and you had some material, or did you yeah. sign up and go, "Oh shit, I got to make up some?" Joke? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I took it was like it was like months and months out, and I prepared so much. And then they told me that when I got there, they're like, "Oh, we said it was eight minutes, it was only six minutes." So I had to like go through my notes frantically, trying to like figure out what I should drop and like. <laughs> such dumb fucking shit i wish i had a set of tape of it but i don't it was something about squirrels some about bumper stickers <clears throat> uh, i don't know what else i was real mad about bumper stickers for political candidates that were it's already done that was <laughs> that made me real irate back then i guess it's like the old school social media rant <laughs> yeah yeah first un unsolicited yeah, bumper opinion. stickers were the original virtue signaling yeah, unsolicited opinions from everybody on the highway. Yeah, why don't people put something uh -huh. over those stickers when the when after the you would think right? Run, just you, there's got to be something else. If you're willing to put a sticker on your car, there's got to be another sticker you like to put on there, right? Over the sticker off, or just take so it off. like you could cover it easily. 
Yeah, or take a razor blade and peel it off. But no, that's all that for life. Yeah, you've chosen your team. You gotta, you gotta keep. It's, it's like being a fucking Cowboys fan. You gotta keep the sticker on even when they suck. Yeah, that's why you gotta put just like a general like. It like if you're like a liberal, you're like Democrats and such, but like nobody's <laughs> specific name. <laughs> like right. even if they win a couple times, they'll right. be it'll be outdated at some point. I was stuck in traffic uh, last week and rode rode up beside a, a truck, and you know those stickers that you buy that are just individual letters. You just take, you know, uh -huh. you, so on the back of his window, these individual letters that he put up and they were not in any way or shape or form, you know, straight, in, straight you know, but it said, Democrats, you come try to take my guns. And <laughs> it's not bad. I mean, those individual letters. <laughs> it's, not bad. it's a problem on a few levels. <laughs> yeah. The problem Dramatic. is like, first of all, no Democrat is going to try to take like they'll, they'll mention you shouldn't have your guns but they're not actually going to take it they're, they're oh. pussies so, yeah. so it's like <laughs> because the guns but they don't have the guns to take them to take them you need the guns to take the guns <laughs> so <laughs> it, it, dude you'll be fine <laughs> it's true big grammatically incorrect too if they took a knife and scraped off the stickers would that be bringing a knife to a gunfight wow. sorry about that's moving on thank you good um. night <laughs> So you got to LA and started doing comedy. Once you get there, I'm sure at that point you have to be thinking about like everybody. Well, maybe I'll venture into TV. You know, did you get a manager immediately? Or did you just start doing stand up? Surely you had to. No, I took I took years and years and years. I don't know how. I don't know how musicians. I get how you would get a manager because you can at least play. You can at least do your stuff. You know, same as com comics. You can do open mics, and someone could be like, "Oh, that was good." There was music open mics. I'm assuming it was like in Nashville also. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, Actors, I never got how actors get ahead because there's no like come to a scene for a fucking coffee shop crowd, you know. Yeah. I, don't, I don't I don't get how they even start. Be, it's probably the casting couch. Uh, maybe. <laughs> At least I've put in the door. Yeah. Um, dude, I used to love the the comedy slash. I don't know if I had these there. Did you start in Nashville? Uh yeah. Yes. Did you guys start your yeah, okay. So I don't know if they had like mixed comedy and music open mics. Um, no, but those really. are my favorite because you'd have like non-comedians watching you so the musicians would get ready and they're like oh this is great they wouldn't be jaded yeah. they'd so actually that's like the, give you an audience so that's the same way for comedians if you've got a crowd of comedians then it's the worst crowd ever I mean in Nashville that's all the crowd is in oh really they sit there like this and just watch you all right I was gonna do Tennessee whiskey exactly. and it's <laughs> funny fuck <laughs> And you see, and I've been playing here for years, so I'm used to it, but you see young bands come through town. They're going to play Nashville. And I'm like, man, mm. why bother? You don't want to come here. It's an industry town. Do something else, get discovered, and then mm. come here. But if you go anywhere else and play anywhere else other than Nashville, you get a live. It's like, oh, they're happy to see live music, yeah. you know, and they're they're amazed at what you can do. But here, everybody does yeah. it. Yeah. Nobody's amazed here. Yeah, it's weird, or like, or at least they used to do it, or something. And there's a bunch of agents and shit. It really is a weird town. Yeah, yeah. It's like I don't know. I mean, you live there, but it seems like it. It should be like real cool, and it is cool, but it's also like sooty. It's very. It's a big time. I mean, it's the music cap, music capital of the world, or whatever. Music city. But it's the music industry. You know, it's and it's been that way fuck since the '70s when they were putting out country music. Yeah, right. everybody on Music Row, it's just a machine. You know, they, they're they going to only sign what's working right then. You know, they don't have any open mind at all. We When we first started, we took meetings with people and they wanted to change things and wanted me to they just start talking do... about branding off the top. And like, uh, Raylan, I'm off the top, right off the bat, like yep. money instead of like. I like what you're doing. That's really cool. Oh, do you know this band? They're, they're similar. You should, guys could, should meet up and like trade ideas. It's never like that. It's, yeah. all, it's always like, let me fit you into a box that works already. It's just all that shit has no, I read this article in Adbusters that about how like illustrators are all co-opted by advertisements and they, they don't let you, they have to make you do straight lines and like even curves. They don't make you do wild, like, like art because it doesn't you can't use that to sell anything but they're like but that's what i want to do i want to do wild things and they're like nah it doesn't work but then it's like well not everybody's sellable to everybody chuck taylor's chuck taylor's work they're not the most profitable thing but they've always worked you know 
Yeah. If, if Chuck Taylor, Commerce All Star, was like right now, it's like I got this thing. They're like, we should make a leather and put some more support in there, and that'll just sell better. <laughs> he was like, ah, oh, you ruined something. Yeah, they've even tried to do special editions like that. And nobody buys them. It's like, just give me the black Chuck Taylors. Just leave it alone. Can they just put memory foam? Exactly, dude. Them? Yeah. They could, but I mean, it probably cost them. You can. Yeah. That's on you. When you buy Chuck yeah. Taylors, you have to take care of the support. Get the insoles. Yeah. 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 <laughs> dude, I went to Bonnaroo. Actually, that's at Tennessee. I went to Bonnaroo and Dan Soder met me. And he's like, he met me like, the, I went the day before and he was like, um, Dan Soto is a comedian. He's like, what do you need? Anything from, I just landed at the airport. I'm like, and then I was walking around all those pebbles and stuff with Chuck Taylor's. I'm like, get me some insoles. <laughs> I am <laughs> crushing my feet wearing actual shoes here. Yeah. When was that last year or the year before? No, no, it was like five, six years ago. Okay. Is that the one you were Dan and I went, we <laughs> went one year, me, Dan, uh, big J, Michelle Wolf, um, Mark Norman, a bunch of comics which just got booked there. It was so much fun. But Dan had this awful girlfriend who kept bossing him around every time. He was like, I'm going to check out Slayer. She goes, well, I didn't agree to go to Slayer. It was just so dumb. She was the worst. And so we were like, Dan, let's go back next year. We'll get an RV. Let's actually have a good Bonnaroo. And that's what we did. We had a great Bonnaroo. You never, it never works to take the significant, significant other on the road with you. It never does. Mm -mm. We've had band members it, do that. They meet up and it's like, it, first of all, you're not going to have any fun. Second of all, they're not going to have any fun because unless you're playing in a band, it's, not it's fun. fucking horrible. You sit around for hours and do nothing. Oh yeah. The only way to do it is, Hey, Hello. my tour ends on, 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 on Saturday night, come Sunday morning or, you know, and then we'll hang out. We'll stay in New Orleans for another week. Just you and I, you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. while everybody else goes home. That That's about it. Cause yeah. people yeah. think your buses or whatever, or hanging out backstage is cool until they do it. And they're like, what this, you're just going to sit here and like, boring. well, yeah, we play in like a couple hours. I'm going to eat a chicken wing and we're going to go play. And they're like, you don't yeah, no. Yeah, we're gonna Dude, every it. girlfriend I've had, I, fi I finally realized it was like, why don't you take me to the comedy store? Why don't you take me to hang out? You always go there. And it's like, it's not that fun. It's not, and then finally I'm like, oh, I'll just show you. And then they come and then it's like, after three times, it's like, it's just you and your dumb friends talking about stand up the same way over and over again. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, all right, I'll meet you after. Pretty much the deal. Yeah, it's us sitting in our van. Same way a tour bus. Well, we have a 15 passenger van. So we're sitting in the van listening to comedy podcasts and just waiting for our time to go in and drinking a beer. We usually have a green room, but they're, you know, it's inside. You can't it's smoke. Inside. You anything. can't smoke like, weed just, in there. You just know? sit in the van and what? Yeah, we what don't do you smoke, can't weed, smoke weed, in weed in the green room. Yeah. Well, some, it's, well, well, okay. So here's why. Because when we played the big show. Oh, yeah. We were, we, we were opening for uh, Tim McGraw, Rascal Flats. Chris Jansen and Chris Lane. You might've heard of one of them, but big country stars. I call right? him Chris Lane. But anyway. So it's I one of those sheds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. But it's one of those shed shows where, they, you know, you got the, the thing, the backstage. And these are all, you know, aside from Tim McGraw, these young up and coming fucking country guys. And we're in our dressing room and just drinking beers and smoking weed. And I see a couple of them, these well quaffed guys come by and they turn their nose up and like, Ugh, like looking down and I'm, you know, I'm way older than him. I'm like, what is wrong with you, man? You're in your twenties and you're running scales and la, 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 la before a show. I, I don't know what happened to the youngsters, man. Not only that, I went to say hi and they wouldn't say I mean, hi. I, that's great. I would get it. Maybe, maybe if you're like, no, nah, I don't smoke, but go ahead. You know, like that's the, the most I'll accept. But like, I used to go to the, I mean, when I started doing theaters, it was like, I felt the same way. Like, oh, maybe I shouldn't. This is like a corporation. This is like Live Nation or something. Or like, yeah. but then I'm like, no bands play here. What do you mean? Everyone's doing heroin here. What? Of course I can smoke <laughs> weed. I don't even ask anymore. I just light up. It's retarded. Why wouldn't you? But but that's crazy. Yeah, we didn't technically get. It hasn't changed since fucking DMT McShroom Face started playing. Changing country. <laughs> Sturgill. Sturgill, yeah. Yeah, no. Uh, well, there's still pockets of people out there doing it, but these these were fucking major label acts, you know part of the machine that they were spitting out and you just look at them like, man, first of all, you should be having the time of your life right now. And you're not, and nobody, yeah. nobody's going to know who you are in five years anyway. And you're going to blow all your money because you think you got a major label deal and it's going to be recoupable and you're just going to be in a van. So enjoy yourself now. You're in your twenties, man. Yeah. Ugh. Um, I, I mean, it's like getting the work done, but. Come on. Yeah. I mean, I, there's a bit of profession. I, I guess if it just wasn't all of them, there had to, you know, there, you remember back in the day, at least Guns and Roses and these guys, just people going ape shit. And I don't see any of that anymore. It's just kind of gotten boring. I miss it. 
It's sad. And I get it if you're like, oh, they got too fuck it. They're too fucked up. They didn't even go on when they were supposed to. And we had to fucking chase one of them down. It's like, all right, you didn't do the job part, but the rest is is supposed to be super fun. That's true. And yeah. and to be fair, I've seen some great shows where somebody was way too drunk to play and it just became a, a scene. And that was almost as good as the show. You know, a dragon guy off yeah. and falling over on the mic stand. It's a story to tell, if nothing else. Yeah. How many times have I've seen Rogan get too drunk and it's like, and then he'll start like, he's do like an hour set and then like another hour of questions. And then he would just like during that hour of questions when he was like bomb bomb, he would like occasionally repeat a joke. And then everyone kind of like look around like the first like is this a joke that you're repeating it and then but he had just no memory and it was like it was so much fun <laughs> but only if it's in the second hour not like right off the bat right so when you were doing comedy out in la i mean you did you did some tv and stuff uh how did you were you looking to do that did you back your way in because at, at some point you obviously landed on the doug stanhope model of fuck all this shit i'm just gonna go to co comedy but you went which Doug did too. It's like a kind of a yeah. journey to get to that point. Yeah. Doug, I guess. Yeah. Doug's great. Doug's great. But like, it was like, you're just sort of expected to, you're in that world where everybody just says it's like expected kind of like this, like social world where everyone's like, especially in the South, we're like, you're supposed to get married and have kids by 25. Right. And then it just takes you a minute to be like, for, but because between 20 and 25, you're like, no, I should be getting that. And then at some point you're like, wait, wait, I don't think I want it. So it took a while for that, for the same thing in stand up to be like, I don't think I want that. Sitcoms suck. Why would I want to be a part of that? You know? <laughs> and then it's like, I can make a living at least not doing that. So like, why do I want to be rich and, and, and a slave rather than like just get by and be free. And then the rich slaves you kind know? of look at you with a cross eyed just because they're like, how come he gets to do all that cool shit? And I'm stuck here being rich. Yeah. There's some Bukowski poem I remember reading in college and it was like, he was talking about working. He's always working and gambling and having shitty girlfriends and shit, but like talking about working at the post office or something like that. And he's writing as himself. He's like first person. He's not even doing a character. So he's like, I'm working at this post office, but I could easily make a shitload of money if I did poetry readings at colleges, but I don't think poetry should be read to people. I think <laughs> you should, should, you should read it like over and over again. You shouldn't like, so he's like, so I don't do it. So all these like millionaire poems, poets, they all look down on me, but at the same time, they wish they had my balls. They all wish they had my balls. <laughs> and he's like, and they'll, they'll always be angry because they don't have them. It's a joke. Yeah, but he's short and male. So it's like, you know. Well, the one TV thing you did was great. I don't, I don't know how it ended up, but the, uh, what was the storytelling show? It was on, I think it started oh, on yeah. and then made it to Comedy Central. What, how, how, what happened with that? This is like a great, it was well, great. Well, by then I had already given up. So, so by the time they were like, hey, let's do the show. It was like, all right, but on my terms. You know, once I like stopped like needing their approval and stuff, then I could actually make something good because it was like, sure, sure. Give me some money and we'll put it, use it, budget correctly, but we'll do it right. So it ended up being really good, but only because I had given up and I wasn't like worrying about them anymore. Yeah. yeah um, Did you get tired of doing it? Uh -oh. oh, we're getting into the freeze. It's freezing. No, I didn't get tired of doing it. It's my special on Netflix and they lost their fucking mind. Ah, so you went to the other, to the competition um, for your special. Yeah. They, yeah. And then they just, they threatened me. They're like, if you sell that, we're going to, I don't know. We're going to put a bunch of your crew out of work with like a week to spare. And I'm like, Oh, come on. <laughs> and then like, and like, good luck paying rent. I'm like, dude, don't be like that. But then I was like, fuck it. Fine. Let someone else do it. It's still a good platform for comics. Yeah. And um, I guess there's kind of been a shift from comedy central used to basically own all the comedy specials. If you want to get up and now do uh, they're done they're yeah. over it seems like a much like yeah. radio certain radio stations and shit like that there's just an old model that is gone yeah they were the most powerful ones and those people you almost never those old models they never were going like hey we, we see it starting to go away let's be cool with everybody no. you know even cabs were like assholes right up until uber completely destroyed them and they're like what the fuck you're like yeah man you could have just turned the ac on back here <laughs> i'm just asking you for so little <laughs> like <laughs> Yeah, so now they're out of business pretty much, Comedy Central. I love how everybody, or not everybody, but a lot of you guys are putting them up on YouTube now. And I think that's genius. I love it. Yeah, I, I read something about artists in general. I hate saying that, that for comedy, but like artists in general just want people to see what, they, what they've made. You know, paintings, music, whatever. They really, at the, at the heart of it, they sure they want to make some money, but they want everybody to see it. They worked hard yeah. on it, you know, hear their song, whatever. So like... 
at some point like, well, I might not sell this, but then they're like, well, who really cares? That's just bonus. So then, yeah, mm -hmm. everyone's like, just throw it up. Live tickets. That's how they make money. It's kind of like music now. We don't make a dime really off our recorded output with Spotify and everything, but no. you use it as a, uh, it's like a billboard to go out and play gigs and people know who you are from listening to that. But it really, you yeah. know kind of flipped around back in the old days you made a record and sold a shitload of records you go out and tour a little bit now you just the record's a t-shirt basically right right i remember offspring wanted to it was right when napster was starting and offspring wanted to offer their album in addition to on sale they wanted to offer it for free for illegal downloads when they say like let's make it a legal download um and sony was like no because at the time it was like they said like illegal downloads increase something like 15 or 20 percent increase record sales so often look i want to try it right <laughs> so, yeah sony was like dude no absolutely not that's um, why those big slow behemoth major record labels i don't know how well i know how they make money now they just take a chunk from everything t-shirt touring publishing all that stuff but that model is trashed and it's not going to be long before they all just completely into the sea yeah i think i think this helped it hurt it too the COVID and stuff People start as they're coming back now. They're like, "Why am I spending forty percent extra on a ticket? Why is if the ticket's hundred bucks? Why am I spending a hundred forty? Who's getting that?" And then the all the musicians are like, "It ain't me at all. It's not even the venue. It's this other company." And they're like, "Well, so it's just going to take a couple big bands to go like we're starting our own ticketing company, three percent." Yeah, like Pearl Jam um, do back in the day where they, I didn't, they wouldn't sell through Ticketmaster. I think. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they're evil. Um, yeah, it's all that. The problem is, like, I remember when Cracker was like, when they brought it to attention to Spotify. Oh yeah, and they're like, hey, I'm like, man. I'm like one of the top five ever, like low or something, low or Euro Trash Girl. One of those was like the top five, I think low. And they're like, no, no, you make your money on on lot on on ticket sales though. And they're like, we don't tour. <laughs> what do you right. mean? <laughs> we're, 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 <laughs> And, and they're, they're like, singer, oh, yeah. yeah, their singer's like an, an economics major, or so I don't know, but he is a genius when it comes to this shit. So he can back up stuff with charts. And uh, David Lowry, I think, is his name. Fascinating. Just David Lowry, war, yeah, yeah, yeah. Warring against Spotify, you know, and they, the, the labels could have taken care of Spotify if they'd have just said, "We're not going to give you our catalog until you pay a decent royalty." But I think Spotify figured out, I and mean, we've talked about this, where they just gave the record labels a chunk of the company Spotify to help their profits. So they just kind of, they're losing money. They're losing money on their artists, but they're making money on Spotify. So it's oh, kind of wow, easy. interesting. a nice little scam. Damn. Though. Everything's so fucking evil. <laughs> it really is. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. Damn. So, I mean, I've talked to venue owners who hate Live Nation and Ticketmaster. And I'm oh, like, yeah. what are you doing? Like, well, we can't stay in business without them. And, yeah. and if we try, if we think we can, They'll buy up our competitors and refuse to let any bands play here. So we'll kind of go out of business that way. That, that they'll like, well, I'll play nice or mean, but like they'll give me a you know a million to start for the year. And then like, but you have to let us sell the tickets. And I'm like, okay. Yeah, dude, Live Nation's buying up clubs here in town. Yeah. Really? Oh yeah. Oh, careful. <laughs> I mean, nothing we can do about it. I we never play here anyway. Yeah, I know. Yeah. But yeah, it's a trip. <laughs> So I'm, I'm always curious, like one of the, uh, I'd seen a lot of your standup and the amazing racist stuff online and everything, but we've, uh, one of the episodes oh, yeah. we got, we got into all y'all. The one thing we could all agree on as a band would start with Rogan as a podcast. So we stumbled upon like the sober October stuff. So we got introduced to a lot, but then I saw the, the first one where you went and disappeared and I forget where you went, but came <laughs> back and all your friends were like, where the fuck did you go? Are you had you, you know, no phone or whatever. What a couple, three months, you were just disappeared. How did that shit come about? Because it was a great podcast. I was like, I didn't even know he was gone, but <laughs> they were all just yep. like, what, what, what happened? <laughs> yeah. I just took off. I left an away message on my email. It was so much fun. It was so freeing. And all my, like my mom was like, Oh no, my manager was like, no, you gotta, you gotta have a way for me to get in touch with you. I'm like, no, anything that comes up, just, I'm going to say no to, I'm not coming back. I'll come back when I'm back. I just want to get lost. Uh, I want to stay in hostels. I want to have some fun. Um, and then she was like, that's no, I need to be, I'm like, if it makes you feel better, my mom can't get in touch with me either. I'm not giving her my number. And she's like, oh, well, yeah, that makes me feel better actually. <laughs> okay. Fair <laughs> enough. Yeah. I just took off to the, I, I, I centered on Southeast Asia. I figured a, a continent It was like cheap. I didn't know how long I'd be gone. So I was like Southeast Asia. I got some, um, some visas of places I needed to get ahead of time. And research the other ones that you could go at the airport when you land. And then, like, I got my flight, like, two days before. I just went to look at the weather report, like, which had the most sunshine. 
uh, and it was Myanmar. So I bought a one way ticket to Myanmar, um, Burma. And then like, yeah, I just stayed for months. It was fucking great, man. I stayed in Burma for like almost a month, like almost like three and a half, four weeks. And then went from there to Thailand, to, to Vietnam, Cambodia, Vietnam, just all over Southeast Asia, East Timor, uh, Indonesia. Did yeah, you have, it was great. Do you have any contact whatsoever with the homeland? No, I turned my phone off. I gave my friend uh, my my password or like Instagram and Twitter at the time, my email and saying like, like, I don't want it, but just like ha- keep it for me. Don't like, I, like I changed the, the password. I just went like this to like change my password. I went like that to the keyboard. And then I pressed cut and paste and send to her. So I couldn't even find it. And then like, and change the password for my email too. So I couldn't even recover it. So I couldn't even get into my email. I intentionally locked myself out. <laughs> and then, uh, called an uber and then turned my phone off threw it in my drawer and then uh and then got in the uber and went to jfk <laughs> like i printed out my ticket and then that was it couldn't get on anything so you left the phone at home yeah yeah it was great it was great it was so freeing god it, damn it was so much fun was it weird at first it had to be a little bit weird yeah uh-huh my first like i, I landed in in yangon which was just they all renamed all the cities in in burma they named it, they renamed it Myanmar because they had all these human rights violations. So the government figured out if you just rename everybody, then no one will come after us. They're coming after a, a non-existent country. <laughs> yeah. They moved the capital to the middle of nowhere too. It was, it was so smart. They're like, there's all these protests. Imagine if like protests in Washington, D.C. And they're like, all right, we moved the capital to about two and a half hours outside KC. People are like, oh, I mean, I'm not going there. <laughs> so the that's middle of what nowhere. they did. <laughs> yeah. So um, it was, it was a, uh, Rangoon, the old Rangoon it was Yangon. I landed there and was like, and then like, I got a hotel the first night. And then I was like, all right, like I stay in a hostel after that. I used their internet to get to find a hostel. And then like, uh, and then I would just like walked outside, put my stuff in and walked outside. And I was just like scared and lonely, yeah. like real scared and lonely. And I was like, I made a mistake. Uh, and I thought about going home like the next day because I had a one-way ticket. So I can, make, I can go home anytime. And I'm not poor. I can afford a ticket back. You know, it's a few hundred bucks. Um, but when I left, I was letting Duncan Trussell, this comedian that I started with in L.A., uh, who's now a Southerner. He's now back in North Carolina where he belongs. I would uh, love Duncan. I was, yeah, he was just moving to, to New York. And I was like, well, why are you looking for a place? Like, I'm leaving for a while. Stay at my place. You can stay as long as you want. And man, if he wasn't at my place, I think I would have just gotten on the on the on the plane back, and I would have just like stayed like undercover for like two weeks, not told anybody I was back, so I didn't have to feel like I was walking my tail between my legs. Right. <laughs> but uh, but he was there, so I was like, "Fuck it." And then after like another day, I made like a friend at a hostel. Yeah. And then it was like, oh, "Okay, this is not so scary. It's just foreign, but it's not so scary." Um. And then found out all my xenophobia wasn't like, I mean, there's some places that are dangerous, but me and Mar in particular was, but yeah, it was safe as shit. I, Sorry, I had another lag. I think it was e- probably, back. E- yeah, equally weird coming back. Yeah, yeah. And I just did it too. I just, I, I've been in Ecuador for six months and it's the same thing. Everybody says like, good morning, good afternoon. Same things all over Southeast Asia. Any, at pretty much anywhere you pass anybody, it's it's their, their translation of good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Um, you just say it. You mid conversation. You're just like good afternoon, and you just keep, go back to your conversation. People just say it to each other. And the last time, and this time, I, I spent a week just trying to get someone to say hello back to me. <laughs> not, not even to start it. Just like hi, and then just they just like, and then keep walking. And I'm like, come on, I'm a human. I'm two feet away from you. I <laughs> greeted you. Good morning. And they just, oh. Well, I'll tell you I mean, what. I get it's South, a big city, but come on. In the South, people say hi to each other every, you know, it's more friendly. Yeah. But I uh, think maybe we're in the wrong we, city for it. Yeah. Well, I think it's because yeah. we're in the Bible Belt. We think we're going to go to hell if well, we're not polite to everybody. It's become something. a little less of that in Nashville, too, because half of the Northeast is. Oh, yeah. Moved you guys here. are all moved here. <laughs> <laughs> it's like people bitching about driving, moving here from, you know, oh, yeah. New Hampshire or so something. I'm like, look, man, whoever cut you off is probably one of your people because you outnumber us at this point. Yeah. Oh yeah. My friend lives in Montana and, uh, and there's a, a theory that's like, do not tell anyone from California about, about Bozeman because they don't want it to be ruined. By, <laughs> Hello, Austin. By Californians coming. They're like, just, don't, I know it's cool. Don't tell them. 
<laughs> like, Sean Patton says that about New Orleans too. Yeah, New Everybody Orleans. moves to New Orleans and he's like, fine, move here, but like join in. Don't just watch us be New Orleans y. Fucking come join <laughs> us. We're having a parade. Walk with us. Yeah. They're I all just it. taking pictures. Look how they're doing it. I was like, what they? You live here. <laughs> <laughs> I do love me some New Orleans though. Oh, yeah. You broke it. Oh, neck God. Damn. Right? damn, it's a fun city. Yeah, I broke my neck there. You then broke then. your neck? Yeah, I was hammered and dove into the Mississippi River, and there were some steps under there that we didn't quite see. It was 3 a.m. We, <laughs> we, we took a cab to the hospital. Like, my buddy, we were all hammered, and I was like, I think it's going to coagulate. I'll be fine. And they're like, no, nah, we got to get you to the hospital. The cabbie didn't want us to live. I, mean, I looked like Carrie, you know, just blood everywhere. Nothing but whiskey Damn. pouring out of my head. Yeah, took a cab to the hospital and then spent the night in a few days in Tulane Medical Center. Whew. Rough times in there. Damn. But he could smoke. Yeah, right? fuck. Oh, yeah, you could, you could smoke in your hospital beds when I was in there. Really? There was this old guy Damn. next to me. Yeah, it, was, it was 1950. Yeah. <laughs> it was like 90, I don't know, maybe 90, <laughs> maybe 1990. But anyway, there was this older man that was sitting next to me, and the nurse came in, and he's like, can I smoke? And she's like, if you didn't care, I don't care. I was like, no, nah, man. But apparently this guy was in, I might have to edit this out. I just <laughs> I remembered this. He was in for a surgery. They had He's to go arrested. They had to go in through his urethra to do some kind of surgery, but he was allergic to whatever pain medication that they gave. So they had, would have to strap him to the bed so he couldn't jerk around. And they had to go in through his penis to do something. I can't remember because I was about to pass out with the story. What? But the, the trippy thing is this. He was explaining it. This wasn't the first time he had to go through it. This is like number two or number three. And I'm like, man, you smoke all you want over there. Woo. I felt good after that. It's like, I just got a busted head, man. You've what if that Jesus. was a dream you had while you were on no. your pain medication no, 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 and none no, no, of that no. actually happened? You some, just dreamt it. It was some old New Orleans guy that was about Damn. to. Damn. It's like, yeah. dude, find a vein. Just there's some there. Find <laughs> one. Go, go through my toes. Do something. <laughs> Anything but that. Anywhere but that. Yeah. And I can't remember why, but something something about whatever they gave him to, to numb the pain. He uh, at least gave him a bunch awful. of edibles or something. Of course, this was early on. So Ugh. who knows? But there was yeah. no edibles then. Oh yeah, there were. In How's illegal weed in Nashville? Is it all? There, it's not. Legal. Well, I tell you oh, what, really? you can actually buy hemp gummies that have a THC punch to them, which I don't know how they're able to do that, but. But it's stores? not. Like, yeah. At the gas stations, yeah, that where I buy my beer and smokes and stuff. That's where it is. I I don't know how. Yeah, and and the weed's not yeah. legal, but no, but, but you go to the guy, is. but you go to your guy, and he's got like seven different strains from. Denver. I mean, it might as well be legal. You just I mean, can't go to a store. Yeah, we can find good actual THC here. We definitely smoke yeah. regular weed, but which you would think the southern states would, would legalize it immediately. It's just the Christian shit. That's yep. it. But New York but, just made it legal, and like the only thing that changes is, is it's now legal for black people. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was just like it was white legal before, just like only four. So now it's like nothing changed for us, and now like all my friends can smoke with me instead of some of them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think the uh, the the uh, the Christian thing probably Maybe. has a hand, but but I think the Christian thing is because it's against the law. You know, my mom's a holy roller, and that's her whole thing about it. She's like, I just don't like that it's against the law. I know it has a lot of medical benefits, and she, you know, she's done her research. So I think it's just because it's against the law that the Christians well, I think, are. You know, yeah. It ain't the Christian, it's the conservative. It's just like, I've heard this is like drug use and it's like, uh, it's really not the same as heroin. It's just like getting people to like think outside themselves a little. Yeah, it's not about the, the religion, you know? And I the, don't think it's a drug though. Well, the I politicians are also- well, No, old. obviously. Yeah, the politicians are old and they're, a lot of their constituency that votes is old. So they can still play that card in anti-abortion or whatever, or abortion, all that nonsense that nobody really cares about. But the people, I don't think people around here, you know, I think they've taken polls 70%, like just, yeah, legalize it. They just won't. It's nuts when, when the people who vote, like almost all were like, either I do it or I don't give a shit. Yeah. It's, it's those two are in a massive group. And then it's like, nah, we're still going to make it illegal. It's like, all right. But the false morals, I think, will eventually cave to their greediness of the tax dollars that come in. I mean, my God, you make a fortune off this stuff. So like, you know how California did it? They had, um, it was a loophole. I mean, they set the tone. It was a loophole for medical, right? Mm -hmm. And it was like, technically like one, like one doctor or somebody like mentioned in the public that it has medical traits to it. And so they're like, oh, okay, well then it could be medical. So they, 
it's federally still federally legal, but then they were like, this technically, it was just this weird loophole. And they're like, we're not going to take taxes out of this. We don't really know what it is, but we're allowing, not touching it. Um, same reason uh, poker was legal for a while because some old mayor said it's a game of skill. And then they're like, that's all you needed. It's not luck. It's a game of skill. This mayor <laughs> said it. So it, it's classified as skill. But blackjack, like, no, that's that's luck. Um, but so it was this loophole. And so then all the eight, like, original, like, medical marijuana places in, like, Oakland and L.A. and um in san francisco they just had a secret meeting and they just go let's just give them the taxes they're not charging us but let's just give them the taxes anyway and they had like a fight about it like well why that's a hell of a lot of money it's like let's just give them the like the much money if we had a shoe store we'd be giving money let's just give them the money and they're like i don't know and they finally decided let's do it and then when the government saw this fucking wad of cash that came in they were like instead of like we'll see what this is later they were like oh no let's protect this (laughs) <laughs> and let's like make it grow. And then the billions came in. Yeah. I can remember Colorado when they made it legal. They, uh, they mm. had something in their co- constitution to where you can only take in, you, you can only profit so much in tax return. Like you pay the, the citizens can only pay so much in taxes. Yeah. Well, and then they get it back. They were having, so to crazy. Re- they were having to refund everybody like crazy because they made so much money off weed that they're like, well, according to our, they were tr- trying to change. Yeah, the constitution, I forgot about that. I forgot about everybody got a that. refund. Yeah, we're trying. How do we amend this so we can keep the fucking money? But yeah. it was uh-huh. yeah, so much money. Yeah, and then people are like, oh, it turns out we actually don't have any morals about this. We don't care. Yeah, <laughs> it turns out the money speaks. Yeah, yeah I mean, you t- these poor states like Mississippi and Kentucky and things. I mean, eventually somebody's gonna go look, man. We can make so much money on this. Yeah, and it's yeah. not hurting people. No, it actually has medical benefits. So, and then Colorado with the shrooms, you're a fan of shrooms as am I. Now I like to, I like to like set time aside to do them. I don't like do them all the time or anything. So it has to be like a, an intention, you know, and everything, but I'm curious, do trees talk to you, Ari, when, uh, when you're on shrooms? Cause trees will talk to me almost every single time. What kind of stuff do they say or convey? Uh, like one time one told me it would miss me and I cried. It was, it Did was, you know I, the tree already? Was it? A, yeah, I, it was I mean, just in the woods. It was. It was, <laughs> it was at my house, my old house that I was in. I was moving, so the last weekend I was there, I did shrooms with my uh-huh. sister, and and the tree told me that it was gonna miss me, and, and that it had watched me grow up, and that you it sound was like sad you're getting choked up. Out I am. If I think about Damn. it, it will make me cry. Like That's I had really a sad. connection with this tree, and then at my new house. I, um, okay. So I, you know, those solar lights you can put up and, uh, it, it comes on at night. I put them, uh, I stapled them to the tree along yeah. the path down to the Creek in the back of my house. And I was doing shrooms and I was sitting on my deck looking at it. And the tree told me that it didn't want me to staple the lights in there, that it hurt them and that it needed me to remove them. So I did. And, and it told me that it would look better laying on the ground anyway. And it was right. It did. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool i don't know how much it would actually hurt them but like yeah i don't i don't talk to sh- trees on mushrooms but then afterwards i do like yeah. maybe it just like changes you totally whenever i'm hiking and i think it's about to rain i'll just go like find a real tall tree and i'll like touch it and i'll be like do me a favor man you're up in the clouds like see if you can hold out for like an hour for me and i'll be <laughs> done with this hike and then yeah sometimes they do i don't know but I like really, I, I, it's not just like hokey. I really feel like I'm talking to them. I would never admit it. I mean, I guess I just did. So, <laughs> that out. well, um, okay. So on shrooms, do you do anything? Does anything like that stand out to you like that? That's happened? Like, is it a, or is it just for fun? Like to keep the party going? Cause they are kind of like a, uh, like a, well, it's like always fun. Meat. Yeah, yeah just, it's always fun. I mean, if you do like a cap and a stem, then it's like party. Like, wow, your, your stories are so interesting for the first time, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but like, but even when it's like heavy trip, it's it's still like laughs a bunch, and then and then just sometimes I always tell you like seeing the truth. Yeah. You know, if it's like conversing with nature or whatever, you just like get the. You can't really like get into words sometimes, but you're just like you just get it. Mm-hmm. You just get everything. Plus, about like the arts too. A lot of times I like really figure out what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah. You know, direction I'm supposed to be heading. Um, it's just, you see everything so clearly and you can get rid of money out of, uh, from, from your life as, as an influence, you know, or other bad influences. You're like, Oh, I see it. I get it. And then it's like, I have to do this. I have to like 
you know, get rid of like bad, I don't know, bad influences or, or tell people like, or, or even emotional influences. Like, why don't I tell that guy I like him? Why, why would I not? I do. Why do I not say it? And then you just like try to hold on to that shit as long as you can. So you can send a text, you know, the next day <laughs> before it goes away completely, you know, <laughs> fuck that guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, all your exes, you're like, I wish we could at least be friends. And then, like, you got about a week to to, to make good on that yeah. before it's like, nah, back to fuck them. Exactly. Yeah, I've had friends that have made terrible mistakes with their exes fucked on up. Shrooms? Yeah. On oh, shrooms, Coke, whatever. Coke's bad, too. I had a buddy Coke's one time. Too, too, yeah, I had yeah. a buddy one time that uh, he'd never done Coke. And he was with a couple other buddies. And they chopped him off a line. And he leaned in and did the pile. Not the line, the pile. Damn. His what? first fucking shot up the nose. And they, the two guys with him, they first they were like, you did the whole shit. And then they started laughing and they're like, oh my God, he did the whole thing. And then they're like, oh God, he did the whole thing. And they had like, <laughs> so they locked him in a room and he, this is back in pre-cell phone. And he's calling us. He lived with us. And he's like, you guys got to give me over, man. These guys are trying to fuck me. And we're like, wait, what? And he was convinced they were just trying to keep him from hurting himself. <laughs> and he got convinced that they were out there plotting to go in and rape him somehow. So Whoa. long story short, we had to go pick him up and then he came You can't home. convince him or not to. No, no, no. He got in the car. He's like, drive, 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 drive. It's 3.30 in the morning. <laughs> so we, we get him back at the house and he, I hear the dialing of the phone and he starts calling ex-girlfriends. Oh, fuck, I forgot. He called his sister at 4.30 a.m. to tell her that he loved her. So she thinks he's committing suicide, obviously. <laughs> She's married to a police officer. So at like five in the morning, there's a rat tat tat on the door and I go staggering to the door and I look out and I'm like, oh fuck, there's a cop here. And then my buddy comes around the side, recognized who he was. I'm like, man, this is, uh, yeah, he was in rough shape for a couple Damn, of that's the worst thing too. Cause like, I'm here because you might commit suicide. He's like, but like that guy's like, oh fuck. He yeah. knows I did hella coke. <laughs> like, he's here. <laughs> my he's lucky he like, we, we, yeah, we got to do a shootout. It's the only way to live. Yeah, and then his girlfriends or ex-girlfriends in Knoxville or something are calling like, uh, it's okay. I, sh I just called his name out, but yeah. Anyway. I just want to ask which one, which friend was it? Was yeah. Money bags? Yep. Money oh, bags. Wow. That's a good story, yeah. So you, hilarious. you're in shrooms, you're a fan of music festivals, yeah? Oh, yeah. They're the best for that. Dude, I got one year, that first year at Bonnaroo, that was my first like real festival. I've been to Outside Lands, those, I call them 11 o'clock festivals. There's like 11 o'clock festivals and there's overnight festivals. Right. You know, yeah. and there's also like free day festivals where it's just like, you know, the city's putting on something in the park on, on a Sunday only, but that doesn't really count. But like, uh, so I've been to the 11 o'clock festivals, and Bonnaroo was like, um, but like I went and got, I think two ounces of mushrooms for like all the comedians. I like put it out on Twitter. It was easier when I was like smaller. I could like really just put out calls for drugs like, right. under the radar enough, to, but, but, but high enough where I could get a response, but under where I wouldn't get in trouble. So some dude from Chicago was coming down. He's like, I can hook you up. I can get some bury at my wheel. Well. Um, and then, yeah, I was like, yeah, I'll take like you know, two eighths maybe. And then he was like, I can get more. I was like, Oh, maybe half an ounce. And he's like, yeah, honestly, dude, however much you need. And I was like, all right, I'll figure it's so cheap. Shrooms are so cheap. So I was like, get two, two ounces. And then I just gave, I got the whole Bonnaroo comedy. It was just like, people would come up to me and like, Hey, um, Ari, uh, I was like, I know what you're here for. Go ahead. And just like, everybody's like, yay. I'm just running <laughs> off. Oh, it was so much fun. I did the same thing at Glastonbury. Uh, all my friends who came from London was like, we'll bring the Coke. And I'm like, and that's just not like Scotland's more their shrooms are, but in London and stuff, they're just like, it's just not that big a shroom place. They're just booze and, and Coke and, and pills too. But like, uh, yeah. So I got like an ounce or two of mushrooms and they started calling me the shaman. And it was just like, everybody, 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 <laughs> my whole group. It was so much fun. It's just the best for it. It's, it's a giant playground. It's all safe. You can't go, you can't wander into traffic. Nothing can get you. And there's a few medics around who aren't going to ask any questions. They're just going to help you. Right. So that, you like know, that, so you just go lie in the grass somewhere. Like that situation you just described. It's fun when you have a group at a show like that, you're all on shrooms and then everybody kind of breaks off and then comes back together and you kind of report back in on the shit going on. Why were you? Oh my God. What happened? Do you see someone? So no, it was the best band I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> it's exactly. like, okay. Yeah. It's my, all my friends, we all took it. We got ready. We're on the band on the stage. Cause I don't, big J figured out. Cause he used to tour with corn. 
And he was like, Hey, you know, we can do, we can get like artist stuff. We have access to artist stuff. Like, well, won't they know? And he goes, no, there's no knowing we are artists. <laughs> We're <laughs> a performer here. Like, but not really. He goes, no, yes, really. We have, this is what the badge says. It's not fake. Um, so we we're on side stage, at Alabama shakes. And like, it was all just kicking in. And I was like, sweet. I was, excuse me for a second. And I was just like, I gotta hit the grass. <laughs> um, and then I remember hearing Kendrick Lamar who went on after them from like far away. Um, yeah, we just laying there every once in a while. You'll, you'll feel a flashlight in your eyes and you just have to like give a thumbs up to whoever's like, are you dead? <laughs> you know, you're I'm just bleeding. laying there. And you're just like, I'm good. And then it's like, yeah. And then they're like, all right, that guy's good. Have you so ever had, much fun. have you ever had a bad trip on shrooms? No. Have you? Yeah. Yeah. But I was around people that I just really? met. What happened? Yeah. And I think that, um, it was just, uh, yeah. and I trusted my friend. Um, it was with my friend Daisy and her friends, Jill and Ben, and they're awesome. And they helped me through my bad trip actually. So, and now we're even better friends, but I basically just was pinned to the ground you know, could not get off the floor. And I've done trips. That sounds like rape, not a bad trip. Yeah, and then I was raped. No, I'm just kidding. I was not raped. I was not raped. I was just kidding. <laughs> Into the floor and I'm <laughs> screaming. Yeah. Really, really like, bad I trip. I was naked. Right. Really yeah, bad. It's all coming out now. You're yeah, right. There were no shrooms. Oh. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> so, yeah. And I ended up feeling bad for two days and ended up puking them all up. I didn't even know it was the shrooms that was keeping Whoa. me sick until I threw them all up and it was just black. I was like, oh, this may be with oh. her. I also had another buddy who flew to Australia. We got him really drunk and he was going to get uh, married. Clearly he didn't want to, but he took a handful and got on the flight from uh, LA to Australia. Can you imagine? A on a flight, 13 hours? Flight to oh. Australia on a handful of mushrooms. That is not smart. Torture. You want to walk around. Like, you can only get up and down the aisle so much. <laughs> Yeah, and, oh. and you can't go to sleep. They keep can't go to away. sleep. Yeah, we got him hammered leaving Nashville, and he got to LA, and he told us he took a handful of mushrooms. Like, dude, good luck. I'll talk to you in a couple of days. I hope, I hope you make it. <laughs> Damn. So, Ari, when is the first, well, other than you vaping with Papa Willie's vaporizer vape in uh, Dallas that one time? When was the first time you remember hearing about Papa Willie? Oh. I met, I met, I mean, I grew up, I went, I grew up in Greensboro until fourth grade. So I guess it was around me because of that. Greensboro, North Carolina. Oh, um, yeah, I got family in Winston-Salem. Oh, really? Okay. I remember on the road again. That was him, right? Yeah. 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 I just remember that song always being a song. It was before I was aware of what types of musics there were, you know, and uh, that must have been the first one or the gambler. So the, actually that's interesting because Kenny Rogers did the gambler, but my grandpa passed on it. Isn't that funny? Oh, really? He passed Damn, on it. Interesting. He was like, nah, I don't see it. Well, he had just oh, I don't done... promote gambling. It clearly <laughs> ruined his career, too. If yeah. he had just done that song, he might have done something with himself. <laughs> yeah. I guess, story yeah was... I, I guess it was on the road again. Well, that was probably Everybody on those, it. those top 40 stations or whatever you're talking about listening to the countdown. It was probably on one of those things. Yeah, yeah. But that had to be like second grade. I don't even know if it was new or it was already like a classic rock song. Oh yeah, because I heard when, it. When did it come out? Early seventies. Um, nineteen eighty. Oh, it was an eighty song. Well, no, you know what? He made it big in seventy three. I don't know. So hold on. Oh, when it's eighty. Song? It's eighty one. Eighty eighty one. I looked it up. Not eighty one. Um, okay, so I was six, six and seven years old. So that would have been about right where I'm like second grade or something. Where it's just like probably everybody's singing it. You can sing along with it real easily. Nineteen eighty. Is when it was, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, okay. he, yeah. He wrote that song on on a plane ride. They said, "Hey, we need a song about being on the road," and he wrote that on in a plane ride. Yeah, just wrote down <laughs> on a napkin or something. <laughs> and it was actually the first song I learned of my grandpa's too. Oh, was, yeah. yeah, my mom said it was one of the first ones I she remembers me singing. Did you want to say something? Well, I just I have to ask about this stuff. Uh, the fucking cancel culture. You've been through it more than anybody, and. I think you handled it better than anybody. And I got oh, yeah? just by not, by just not engaging. Like when they were yeah. really coming for you, you were, I mean, there was some heat I'm sure, but I don't know if you were smart enough or dumb enough to figure out that if I just, they're going to be very angry about something within a month 
at the longest. So that's usually how it is. You just got to like, it, it, I used to tell Ralphie this. Oh, he lived in Nashville. Ralphie May used to live in Nashville. No shit. I don't know. Um, yeah. He's dead. <laughs> He's not around much, but like, uh, <laughs> RIP. Um, uh, yeah, it was just like he had something. Somebody took something out of context. He did a joke about Dance with Wolves beat out Goodfellas for best picture one year. <laughs> And he was like, yeah, pretty much nothing can dance with wolves. It was a good movie, but Goodfellas is like, you know, one of the most classic best movies of all time. And there's a lot of this where like the, whoever won the best movies actually doesn't hold up as the best movies, you know, just like time and place. And he goes on this long tirade tongue in cheek about how uh, Native Americans have stolen our shit for too, too long. And um, we've got to put a stop to it. These damn Indians taking our best picture. It's just a long thing. So somebody cut out the setup of it and just had him going off on native americans and then all these native americans are like what the fuck is that supposed to mean and it's like no no it's about the movies it's not even about that anyway and he was getting gigs canceled because of that shit and death threats and bomb scares and stuff and it was just like ralphie you got a cold there's nothing it's not your fault you caught a cold so like you just gotta ride it out it, it'll pass it's you can't reason with a cold you can't talk it out it's just like let him go and then every time i saw anthony kumi do this i thought lots of people you try to like argue it down but that just breathes like puts oxygen on the fire. Mm. So like it sucks, but also it's, it's also on one level, it gets it going more and on the other level. It's beneath you. It's yeah. just like, if, I don't know, if you want to interpret it that way, it's up to you, but it's not for me to go in there and argue about why your stuff is good or bad or meanings means this or means that, you know, you know how they get like uh they always misinterpret that Bruce Springsteen song. Uh, in the USA born in the USA yeah but it ain't for him to be like no you're doing it wrong it's just like if you get that out of it that's not what I meant but that's what you got out of it so okay you're only listening to the chorus yeah exactly so I, it's just beneath all of us to fucking go in there um, I'm always astounded at the amount of comedians that try to shit on other comedians for telling jokes that they don't agree with it just seems it's it's crazy it's a weird one because it's like, I guess we're talking as our own person with our own, there's no character in front of it. Yeah. So it, it just gets this thing of like, that's your actual views instead of like, you know, if you do a Holocaust joke, that's an easier one than like a rape joke. That used to be the, the one. Now it's like race jokes. But like, if you do a Holocaust joke, it's like saying like, you know, my order didn't come out at five guys in time. And it was like suffering seven Holocausts in a row. Um, and you're like, oh, you think the Holocaust is not as bad as, you're like, no, no, I think the Holocaust is one of the worst things ever so that's the exaggeration it's yeah. holocaust 9 11 aids like you, you take the biggest thing because we do feel it and so it's all right you guys are squares you don't get it yeah we we understand how big it is that's why we're using it as a reference to make light of if yeah, you yeah. didn't think it was a big deal it'd be like it'd be like it's like getting into a fender bender it's like but that's not such a bad thing it's like yeah right that's why it wouldn't work as a reference yeah. <laughs> like, five guys late yeah it doesn't make any sense yeah yeah but i've always thought about that because you never hear of uh except for political views, which whatever, but you never hear of uh, another musician going, dude, you can't be singing about that shit. You know, what are you thinking singing about that? It's just, you know, song, song, song. But I guess to your point, you could be telling a story. Well, I don't know. It's not that much different, but I guess. Well, it, a lot of comics have become like pretty corporate too. So they, they, they jump in too. Um, they're all kind of like more driven to success rather than not all, a lot of them more driven for success rather than like actually doing something artistic and, and interesting. Yeah. So like, it's rarer that you'll get a John Denver speaking up about, um, I guess, rap lyrics, saying like, yeah. leave him alone. Uh, the super clean guy who would never do anything even close saying, hey, guys, guys, stop, leave them alone. You, and you would think that guy would be like, well, that's too dirty, you know? Yeah. Um, but he gets it. He's like, I sing about nature. <laughs> you <can> sing about <laughs> other people's pussy. It doesn't matter. It's the same thing. It's what's on your mind. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Interesting. I can you know, I was thinking just now about like social media and you talk about comedians or whoever being more corporate. It's like with the invention of social media, because I got to grow up without it, which was great. And yeah. you be, live and do shit and mess up or whatever. But if you're a comedian or a young artist and you're actively on social media, it almost you're almost creating. Which you a, have to be, by the way. But you're creating a corporate environment for yourself, like a, a complete chain. You're chaining yourself down because you have to act that if you're going to so be weird. Yeah. You have an opinion on something. Let's say it's something innocuous. It always helps me understand things. I didn't like coleslaw for a long time. 
No one's going to fucking try to get me for that. You know, I just didn't like coleslaw. And then tried it a few times, just didn't like it. And then one day I said, like, oh, I kind of do like it a little bit. And then now I like coleslaw. But I was never on the record anywhere for not liking coleslaw. No one's going to call me a hypocrite for now eating coleslaw. No one's going to have a fucking a timeline of me showing that I don't like coleslaw. So same shit. You put it on there. It's on forever. So you can't like slowly let your opinion alter and change just naturally. Yeah. And then you see what you wrote. So you're like, I have to try to stick to that thing. I, I'm not liking coleslaw as my identity. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> even if you do like, I got to eat it quietly now because everyone will call me a fucking backtracker. It's so weird. It's so weird. It is strange because yeah. I've basically I used it. I mean, the old guy is like, well, this is a great way to sell t-shirts, basically, you know, throwing a, a crack, a, a little witty line or whatever here and there to keep people interested. But I never contemplated trying to let people in and see this, that, or the other, or con I don't, I just assume. And I think rightly so that nobody really gives a fuck what anybody has to say. They want to say shit, but nobody cares what I, my opinions on anything, really anything. So why am I off? Right. They shouldn't. They shouldn't. Yeah. yeah. I yeah would, no, one's, no one's ever changes their mind. No one goes, oh, good way to think about it. I never thought about it that way. Yeah. Why does rarely it, do yeah. yeah. I've got like Just two friends minds. that I can argue with about things that we are diametrically opposed to and go, ah, this is a pretty good point. It's a pretty good point. And yeah, walk away and rarely like, and not in public, only between the two of you. Like, and even me or you probably open minded, still hard to change. Your, like I had a thing of like, even when the schools were like, we should shut the schools when COVID was like, Hey, this might kill everything on the planet, you know, about right. like a year ago when no one knew how bad it was going to be. And I was like, yeah, shut the schools. It's a problem. And then my friend was like, Oh, a lot of the poor kids, that's the only way they eat lunch is at schools. And you're like, Oh, oh yeah. I, that's, yeah. I didn't consider that at all. Good point. But like, those are still the rare, those moments. Yeah. Yeah. And the, we're supposed to keep talking about these things so that minds can open, you know, I mean, 20 years ago, gay people weren't allowed to get married and now i know it's disgusting are. what happened <laughs> what happened to this country Fucking awful the institution of marriage first of all they should just take it it should be only them now <laughs> there were a few comics a few gay comics at the time yeah a few gay comics that was their angle they were like they were like you know they're fighting they're picketing right now in california for the right to get married and i'm just like shut the fuck up i've been dating this dude for nine years you're gonna ruin it for me <laughs> I've, been, I've been leading them on and now i'm gonna have to make a decision stop it <laughs> yeah and then plus it makes you just you just turn into normal um, white yeah, people too. it makes it much less exotic you know i mean you, you had it going on you guys were cool and now no, I, you're not cool no i talked to all my gay buddies i'm like dude you guys had your your time two and a half men or whatever but gay is just, just boring now, man. It's you have very to be boring. Transgender. It's boring. Yeah, you're just another. Yeah. Same as weed. Yeah. Weed used to be outlaw. It used to be like, oh, yeah. sweet, you smoke it? And now it's like, yeah, I went over to the store. Go yourself. Yeah. You know, it's like, I smoke too. Like, so does everybody. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I had a, I worked for a guy who was tr like pre-op trans, but this was like 1992, three, four, something like that. So it was like, what the fuck is? No one even knew what it was. And, uh, and he was like, I like heterosexual men. And you're like, how is that? What do you mean? And he's like, I'm a woman. And I'm like, wait, no, you're gay. And he's like, nah, it's different. And I'm like, okay, but who, but who do they like? He goes, they have to see the woman in me. Otherwise, it'll never work. If they see me as a gay dude, it won't work. It's got to be a heterosexual man. I'm not into gay dudes. I'm not gay. And you're like, what? <laughs> this doesn't make any sense to me. And now you can get it. It's easier. But like, damn, it was, took a while. It took like the whole summer of working with him before I'm like, oh, okay. I, I can sort of see the woman inside you. But man. Did you fuck him? Yeah, it's all so different. What? Did I fuck him? No. I was like, how do you fuck? And he goes, okay, good question. He goes, you got to get legs over me. So it's facing. So then I can, uh, or I, he goes, that's what I do. I put my legs over them and then they stick me in the, in the ass while I'm like facing them. And like, it was missionary. It's like missionary. Yeah. Kind of missionary, but you got to get legs up. Cause you got to, you got to go further around. Right. Then it's Again, not like you know, the giant in the butt or like two, two different quadrants. It's a harder angle. I've never tried to fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a, it's a toughest angle for anal sex is facing. Yeah. That's the title of this episode. <laughs> <laughs> you ever read that book? So you've been publicly shamed. No. no, I need to. Oh, it's a cool book. John Ronson. John Ronson. Yeah. John Ronson. It's all about public shaming and how they like, used to put people in, in like stocks, you know, Yep. That was a way of like what justice. Like. People could like laugh at them and stuff and they stopped doing it. And people thought they stopped doing it because it wasn't effective. Uh, 
But the more research they do, they realized they stopped doing it because it was too effective. People couldn't even live in the town anymore afterwards. It wasn't like, oh, you do your one day and you're done. It was like, this is so embarrassing. And it's so damaging for so long. They're like, no, no, put me in jail for a week rather than one day in there. It's like, this is really bad. And we've gone back to public shaming, um, but with no like end in sight. No, I know. And, yeah, and you can't convince people like, uh, no, I meant that it's, or even if you didn't mean something, it's like, what the fuck, you're, fucking, you're never supposed to talk about the arts. It doesn't matter what you do. You're, you're attacking fucking topic. It, it's so dumb. It's like. I remember when the tornadoes came through right before Christmas, I mean, a year ago, but it gets to the point where people are like, you know, they make a post about something You're like, well, the tornado went down. It was like two blocks from my house, but, but, but it was close. We almost lost everything. It's like, dude, you, you just saw a tornado. That's not newsworthy. Yeah. But you, didn't, and, you yeah, didn't lose anything though. You didn't lose, but anything. they all want to feel that pain. So it's like, can I join, can I get it somehow? It's close. Yeah. I, which is like, like the ideal. It almost hit me. They're all just fucking dorks. Dude, I remember like there was it, for a while I was like, at least Jews aren't joining in with this. Like, what, what was me stuff? And for a while we really weren't, you know, because uh, we always had kind of the Trump card in terms of like hi historically, you know, sure. Uh, oh, maybe you guys don't get taught that in school. In Russia, but like <laughs> um, it was just like whatever, some European stuff. But like, um, uh, um, but like we weren't doing it. And then it started. I saw it start about a year and a half, two years ago. And it was all like, it sucks to be a Jewish. Everyone's, and this one girl, I remember she read some blog and she goes, I have to take my Star of David and I have to put it under my shirt because I'm in fear of my life every day. <laughs> and it's like, well, why are you wearing it at all then? It, legitimately, if you're in fear of your life, you're still going to wear a necklace that has nothing, no like religious value. And I'm like, it's like, just don't wear it. If you really fear for your life, why would you be wearing that necklace out? Even tucked in. Are you, are you fucking nuts? Like you're lying. You're just lying. You're making up something grander than it is. And that's who's leading the rebellion cause against you or against anybody. And you want to be like, get out of here. But, but they're like gnats. They don't get out of there. Yeah. I still stand by most people just don't give a fuck what other people do as long as they're not getting messed with. Just leave me alone. Let me mm -hmm. do it. Yeah. Same way. I think it's been and that way. Go ahead. Yeah, most people don't give a shit. And misinterpretation too. There was some, um, I love this one because it kind of proves it always. There was some sculpture in some college. There was a woman sitting reading a book, a, a bronze um, sculpture on a bench and a man standing over her in this in this pose, just like, kind of like, whoa, kind of like this, you know, like talking to her. <laughs> and so everyone's like, oh, the man's not letting her go. She just wants to read her book book and, and we got to take the statue down because it's about like mansplaining and it's showing how like this woman's trying to read and better herself but this man's like talking to her and not like letting her like grow as a human and just like clearly is not reading her body language and they ended up like it was at some college and they took it down so okay they told the artist that they they told the artist that they took this down because it was like this thing that promoted mansplaining and and showed how like men only want women to talk to them and they don't respect them at all and the artist was like yeah yeah that was my point i was trying to i was trying to show that <laughs> and he's like they took it down <laughs> that's what i was trying to say that it's a problem we have to correct and he's like yeah he was like they got it and didn't like what he was just like stunned by it he was like that's it's, it's hard to wrap your head around they got it but they don't get it <laughs> yeah so it's like part of you wants and then and then what sucks is you see another artist getting it right you see somebody getting it for something and most people are like well, that's not even a thing and and if you try to defend them, it just sort of makes it worse. But if you if you just ignore it, then everyone feels like you're being abandoned. So it's just this real tough position for other people. Like, I don't know how to like end it. It's so weird. I don't know what the answer is with all of it. But then the negative is next time you write that word in a lyric, you're gonna you're gonna you're not gonna be able to like think clearly and be like, this is what I wanna say or not. You're thinking about the reaction and yeah. Maybe now you're doubling down. You're like, fuck them. They can't tell. So like, maybe you would have edited it out. Now you won't. Maybe you would have used it. Now you won't. It, it's just like, now you're not thinking for yourself anymore, which is like the worst thing artistically to have happen. Well, yeah. I mean, now that I, we won't, I don't write anything like that. And also, um, I don't, oh, I forgot what my point. Well, you, you have also a name. I can write shit and say shit because nobody knows. My grandpa is yeah, Emmer sure. Bright. Nobody knows that. <laughs> so, you know, I can say shit and nobody really cares, but you know, I, I yeah, I don't want to ruin my, I mean, not that I could solely ruin my grandpa's reputation. I just don't, I want him to be proud and not ashamed of me in any way. And but don't you remember when we were kids that 
nobody talked about politics 20 you had to like maybe an hour yeah. at night when the news came on but nobody talked about it because it's boring as shit it's, it's so boring, boring. And, and then it makes you talk about something you don't barely even know about you start getting into an argument that sometimes like five minutes in you're passionately screaming getting worked up and then you're like wait i know about like eight percent of this whole argument yeah <laughs> you ask my opinion it's an, an unfounded opinion i just lean slightly that way and now i'm fucking fighting you i don't even really care or know yeah <laughs> It's like the same thing with sports. You're like, why do you think that basketball player is better than that basketball player? So, so the, yeah, dude, I, I, I don't know. I don't know any of it. I just, I'm speaking off the top of my head. I'm an American. That's what we do. Talk shit. And then we don't even think about what we're saying. <sighs> anyway. And then when you learn about how. Yeah, I can't. No, I can't back it up. I have no clue. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we do. Or you're like, oh, I might've just made that up. You know, I don't know. But um, I remember yeah. when you act, learn how actual change is made when it's, you're talking about bills and stuff and, and laws, it, it's never what you're trying to do. So my grandpa always got behind the anti-horse slaughter bill. And for a while it was called the anti-horse slaughter bill. And then it changed into the safeguard American food export act, because I had to go into verbiage under there that said that the USDA couldn't inspect horse slaughterhouses, but it's under this whole different thing. So it made me realize, Oh, yeah. these, all of these things that are happening in these bills are just verbiage. Like there's verbiage it's, in there. It's just theater. It's so crazy. It's like you're not even doing your what you're actually trying to do. It's just sneaking into other bills and stuff. And it's not, you know, it's trying to sway public public uh, perception. And then it's like and then we're all here arguing and then they're getting whatever they want. Yeah, they add yeah, on some kind of political part of it. Yeah, they it just sucks. add sentences onto bills. to. And make then you say, happen. wait, I'm against that. And you're like, wait, you're for horse slaughter. What is wrong with you? And it's just something tacked on. Oh, those. right. And you're like, oh, <laughs> here we go. Has nothing to do with it. Yeah, exactly. Let's give clothes to the homeless people. It's like, okay. And then also let's fucking beat up some any my name Samantha. And you're like, uh, I didn't read that far down. <laughs> None of them actually read it. They're always five hundred pages and they're the politicians are just people. They're like, I don't know, somebody summarize it for me. And my God, you can look at them and tell right, we're right. not the best and the brightest we have to offer because those guys don't want that gig. I have a theory that if we really want a better presidents, we they get paid a lot more. They make like two hundred grand, four hundred grand, like what top level person is going to make that? They make way more. You want a Bill Gates working for you? Fucking pay him Bill Gates money. Yeah. You know, give like $2 million and you'll get fucking scientists working there that can figure shit out. Now we have like, it's just people like, I need the cash, bro. Now we have Bill Gates. Like, <laughs> yeah. Anybody really rich or like, like worthwhile is, is working for hedge funds and making actual cash. That's what cracks and me up about bringing up Bill Gates. I don't want to get too far into this, but why does he have to be the, the spokesperson for vaccines? You would think a guy with the money, it might be his idea, it might be everything. But is he such a dick he has to be the face? Couldn't he put scientists up there to speak science-like just as a, as a ruse? Does it have to be that guy talking about it? Because yeah, I don't know. He's a nerd. He's just a nerd. I mean, you could find somebody a little more, I don't know. Yeah. The two spokespeople they got, we could find better people to, to convey information. That's all I'm Mr. saying. Mr. Rogers. It's show business anyway. Yeah. Mr. Rogers. Mr. Rogers. Oh, yeah. They could. They could hologram him. Is he dead? Tough. He's dead, right? He's, he's dead. gone, yeah. He gone. Him and Bob Ross. If they got Mr. Rogers and Bob Ross to say yes. anything, then people be like, I'll do it. I'll do it. It's a good point. Is there anybody mm -hmm. alive like that right now that that could do it? I don't know. Oh, yeah. The guy who does the nature documentaries. Oh, David Attenborough? Oh. David Attenborough. Nobody hates David Attenborough. Yeah. God, we used to watch those trials. A he, lot. Went, he spoke at Glastonbury. We were all walking along and, uh, and um, we just heard this like, roar erupt from we we're walking past the pyramid stage it was daytime and we we're like what the fuck's going on and we're like who's that old guy like you like barely see him and it was just nuts how much people were going fucking crazy for him and it was like is that an old rocker like you know it's just a gray-haired dude and then yeah and then he went on the big screen and it was like ah, <laughs> it was way bigger than <laughs> least like the pet shop boys jumped on with the killers and there was like a slight applause this was like fuck what was he doing just we talking? did it <laughs> yeah, he was just talking he was introducing like Hey guys, thanks for, we don't use any pl disposable plastic at this festival. Um, we saved like 5 million cup bottles of water. So I'm like, I don't know, whatever. Have you ever cool. opened, have you ever opened for a musician or a band? No, I can't imagine that would be any good. No, I don't think so. Mm -mm. Some comics have, but I always thought it was so weird. Yeah. I've seen oh, one. Billy, Billy Wayne Davis, this comic opened for, for, um, Sturgill, I guess for a while. Huh, I didn't know um, that. Cool. Yeah, and I went to see him at the Beacon, and I had to leave. I got to do a spot, so I just watched Billy Wet, Billy Wayne, and then 
left. I didn't really know who Sturgill was. I just had heard that he was a some good country guy. And I was like, I don't have time, man. I got to do a spot. <laughs> and I was like, fuck, I left free tickets at the beacon for it. Yeah, he's one of the good country guys left. Yeah, yeah. He Wasn't went outside the system. Yeah. Right? yeah made it he's awesome. one of those, much like you guys, my favorite comedians, that he just, he doesn't give a fuck. And he's figured out a way to, to just more freeing watching uh, comedians and musicians that truly don't give a fuck. And the first guy we That's talked nice. to for this thing, Doug Stanhope. Like, how do you start off any better than that? And just, it's refreshing to hear dudes like that talk. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah, he's awesome. He even left LA. He's like, hey, LA. People are like, what do you mean you have to be in LA? He's like, for what? It didn't make any sense until years later. They're like, yeah, for what? Ari, you know? thank you so much for doing this with us today. I appreciate it. You're the goat. Yeah, guys. Thanks for the cover. When and, you, uh, uh, and, uh, I'll, maybe I'll see you guys in September. Yes, let's hang out. If you, I know you, I'll buy you drinks or bring you shrooms, or we're definitely just going to come see you do your show. So, um, all right. Yeah. Nate's out of town too. So you'll be the only ones I know in town. Yeah. Well, okay, cool. All nice right. To meet you. Bye, Ari. <laughs> all right. Bye. Ari is my favorite comedian. Actually, me too. Anyway, what a great episode. Love that guy. Yeah. I hope he, he's supposed to come to Nashville and we're going to hang out and hopefully we can get him to do another podcast for this. Hopefully so. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. Uh, Rate, review, subscribe, share, all that stuff. And next week we'll have another fabulous comedian. Enjoy your groceries. Free Britney. Don't be an asshole. I know your mama's name. Ari Shafir owns this song. Ari Shafir.